Hello, beautiful beings. I get to move today. I'm calling it graduation day because I've been with a male alcoholic roommate for a year and a half now and he's just been obviously the perfect presenter for me for the resistance that was still in, in me surrounding specifically men alcoholics. Oh man. I did not get good grades in school, but I'm getting really, really, I'm getting A pluses in all of this. I really am. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so ancients, what? Um, yeah, I did. I repeated myself in my last um, video and I did say that, but you know, I just, when, when things are flowing through, I just really don't, I just try not to let my mind get in there too much, you know, and, and just let it, let it go. And, um, hopefully it'll help somebody. Uh, anyway, no matter if there's repeating or not, that's my point. You know, I'm, I'm trying to, um, learn that my videos don't need to, I'm still shedding any ideas of how my videos are supposed to look. Uh, cause I just want to get the message out, whatever's coming through, uh, to help, you know, basically to help other people not suffer so much. You know, not to suffer, not to suffer your existence anymore or as much. Anyway, so, okay, so I am going to touch on the weight gain thing. Uh, I just feel, I, I can't stop smiling. Just the awareness surrounding things that I've been struggling with, um, working on, um, is just so clear today and anorexia is one of them. I went to treatment for anorexia in 1989 and it's 2020. And I am, I am, I feel like I'm just now fully aware of all the thoughts, the sneaky thoughts that come in disguised as something else, but it's, it's, has always been an anorexic relapse. Always. Oh my gosh. That's so beautiful. I am under no illusion anymore. If those, any of those thoughts come in for me, that I need to lose weight, I, I see it for what it is now. In no matter what form it comes in, I know it's a lie. I know it's, it's sick behavior and it's gonna take me down a road and kick my ass again. Oh my gosh, it gets so much worse every time. And that's, that's, that's hard to say. I mean, how could it be scarier every time? But it gets scarier. It feels like I'm dying when I starve myself, when I lose too much weight. I'm not even going to think about losing weight anymore. Some people, you know, they have the opposite, the, the opposite weight struggle, but it's still the same. It's still all the same emotions. Really? I'm not kidding. Cause some people are like, Oh, poor you, you have such a high metabolism. Well, yeah, it can be so scary to feel like you're actually dying because you are actually dying. Your body is eating itself. Yeah, that's really, really scary. <laughs> and to have to force feed, I mean, some people absolutely love to eat. You know, can you imagine you're dying and, and it's the last thing you wanna do is put food in your mouth? Yeah, that doesn't sound like fun to me, and it's not, and it hasn't been. So, oh my gosh, yes, I've learned. Yes, I've learned, I'm graduating. I get to move on today. One of my best friends ever. And you know, I've told you that I don't, I've had a problem having male friends because they always want something more from me. And that's not from a place of ego at all. That's been my life experience. Yes, there was a little bit of feeling of disgust there. However, I'm working on that too because it's a natural whatever. I don't need to get into it. But anyway, so lately the divine has um, reintroduced these two, specifically these two um, men that that are showing me just this pure undiluted agape love. Agape love is what the world needs. Not more of any other type of love, I don't feel. Um, you know, how do I know though? But the agape love is the, the highest form of love, the purest form of love. And, and I can feel that coming from these men. It's, it's so life-giving. It's something I've wanted my whole life. And, and they're giving me credit for it because, of course, not in an egotistical way. But when a, when a being does all their work, continues to do their work, and to release the unnecessary personal identity, that's not there anymore. That's not in my, my point of attraction. My point of attraction is right now. 
it's it's my true nature so that agape love that that I'm feeling is just eclipsing my life I mean obviously I've had so much love coming to me from my daughters and outpouring from my daughters and from my mom and to my daughters and to my mom you know that has helped me that that love alone has helped me to go from person to presence person to presence in these last almost seven years you know to where well, presence is our natural state, but being unconscious for so long, it takes a while to be back in that. So, the love that I'm feeling from these men is so genuine, and I can feel it. I can feel, like, there. oh, here's an example. You know, um, I have this favorite grocery store I go to, and there's this um, this guy always stocking dairy, and, and he'd smile at me, and I'd say hello, and, um, you know, I, I've had a habit of just wearing skirts when I'm out, or my... Um, my snow pants, you know, I just try to cover up because I don't like the feeling. I don't like the feeling I get. It hasn't helped me at all to um, view the male species in a different way. Um, to to pick up on the thoughts, see them, you know, look at me in a certain way, um, feel their intention toward me, that energy, that sexual energy. Um, yeah, it just makes me uncomfortable, really uncomfortable. And so... So, okay, so I was like, you know, basically covered up every time I said, hello, how are you, to this dairy guy. And this this has been a matter of months, like six to eight months I've been saying hello, hello to this person and, and feeling like he might be somebody that I might want to have a conversation with. Well, um, a couple months ago I was in the checkout line at this store and he wasn't working. He came into the checkout line behind me. And, you know, I've, I've had a good feeling about him and, um, you know, that non-sexual feeling and that, okay, don't, I, okay, shh. So, I, uh, you know, I turn, he's like, hey, Patina, and um, some people call me Mama G, some people call me Patina. Uh, Patina was my um, birth, birth name. Uh, it's Patina, P-E, capital T-I-N-A, after my, my dad, Pete. So, uh, so my mom and dad gave me the name Patina and Papa G gave me the name Mama G um, three days after I woke up with Muji. So he was like, hey, Patina. Uh, I was like, like, oh, hey, how are you? And, you know, we just barely started talking and he up and downed me twice. Not just once. Not just like, oh, I guess I could overlook that, even though I feel like I can feel it. When a man looks at my body in a certain way with a certain type of intention, you know, and it happens that quick, it, I, I immediately retreat into my shell and um, no, that was it. The wall came up. It's not an unhealthy wall. It's a, it's um, there. It's it's his personal identity. It's his person that is looking at me like that because his being never would. Um, beings never judge each other. We don't judge each other on how our physical forms look, on what comes out of our mouths. Like there's no judgment from being to being. It's all from the person. And you know, there for me, there's something about certain men the way they look at me. It fe it feels like they're taking from me. They're taking, they're taking, they want, um, my light, not just the physical form, but they want to, they want my light. This is not conscious on their part, their part. So I've been learning to, you know, release those feelings of disgust. Absolutely. Just absolutely disgust that come up. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be done talking about that. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of intense. However, my point is, I don't feel that with these two men in my life. And it's so life-giving for me because I've wanted that for so long. And, and I didn't realize, you know, fully for a long time that, that it, it was dependent on doing my inner work. So the fact that they've showed up is just the reflection of where I am in my vibration and how much I've released. It's, abs it's so beautiful, absolutely incredible to me. I can't stop smiling, my cheeks hurt. It is graduation day. 
I'm not sleeping here one more night. I'm going to wake up. Well, I haven't got to see my new place in the light. It was ju it was almost completely dark, and I did get a glimpse of an elk farm uh, that we passed on the way to the house. So, wow. Wow. An elk farm. Uh, I, throughout my life, um, specifically since 19... 96 when I, 1998 when I learned about animal medicine and um, you know that when animals uh, come into our experience they are giving us their medicine so if you don't have a book like that or whatever if if an animal a certain animal and you encounter one um, if you google what is the spiritual meaning of fill in the blank it'll shock you you'll be like oh my gosh that's exactly what I needed so the fact that there's an elk farm nearby Wow, I'm looking that up today. I haven't yet. And I just feel, oh, and so there's another roommate there, another man roommate. He's 30. And, um, you know, I felt very leery about that, obviously. And um, I met him and uh, come to find out, he was just like, wait, after we spoke for a while, he knows me um, from when I was raising my girls. He used to come to my house. He knew uh, my youngest daughter. And so I was able to talk to her about him. And she said that they are really glad that it's him because he doesn't have a mean bone in his body. Yay! Oh my gosh. I even questioned him that night. You know, um, I just I just know the questions to ask people because I, I would rather sleep in my car than move in with somebody, some, you know, an angry man. I won't. I refuse. I absolutely will not settle. I won't do it. And you know, if I move in and and somebody around there does have a temper, I don't have to stay. Absolutely not. I I am not stuck. I am not stuck. And that feels amazing. I don't feel like I've ever really been here in my life before. I knew that my roommate was an alcoholic when I when I moved in. But I wanted a dog so bad. Like at a soul level, I felt like I wanted a dog so bad and this was the place that I found and there was no deposit. It was 350 a month. I mean, and a like a 6 foot privacy fence where a dog absolutely can't get out a doggy door you know and he seemed pretty mellow like quiet I didn't pick up a like an angry vibe from him so that's one thing that I I knew I did it I knew I moved into a place with an active alcoholic um, consciously because of something I wanted so badly and Oh, so I'm not beating myself up for it. I do see it though um, that I won't make that choice again. Yeah, so there's a difference between uh, um, moving in with people that do drink. Um, and, you know, I did ask about how do you drink and how often and, you know, give me an idea. And, you know, they were honest with me. I could 100% feel that. And, um, you know, I felt respect for me also. Um, coming from them and they're like yeah it's really quiet here and, and it's very peaceful and because because I need that I need that that's my essence that's who we are so I obviously need that in my surroundings too I never used to insist on it but but I definitely do now <sighs> as much as possible oh, oh my gosh I'm so excited okay ancients is there anything else I hope I didn't already mention it. I don't think I did, but I did this in my last video. I talked about gaining weight and then, you know, the the um, the wonderful, amazing friends coming into my life. It kind of sounds like the same video, but that's what's still going on, And but it's evolving. And today I woke up feeling so, just so good physically. And and I just want to share with you that, that in this um, this last experience, with the anorexic relapse, I realized that I am severely lactose intolerant and I have been overloading my system with uh, probiotics from eating way too much yogurt to try to gain weight. So um, I did read an article once that a person cannot overload their system with probiotics, but you, we can. And it's literally eating our nutrition if there's too much in there. And so I've been feeling all that leaving my system and over the last few days I've stopped any dairy and it's incredible it's incredible how much better I feel so um, hopefully I didn't already mention that <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go for now and you know get moved and um, 
if you're struggling with anything, it's a full moon tomorrow, uh, February 9th. It's a, what is it? It's a snow moon. <clears throat> if you're on the struggle bus with anything. Oh yeah, I just really wanted to mention, um, I've talked about this twin flame connection that I've perceived that I have. Well, something shifted in me yesterday and, you know, it's the, it's the agape love. It's, it's the, it's the feeling like that is enough for me. That type of love. That's the, I mean, that type of love is love. It's the, it's the perfume, the essence of our own, of our own true nature. They're saying, they're reminding me of that. I don't care about the romantic love. I do, you know, I still am obviously attracted to certain people and I do still have those feelings. However, you know, I, I won't act on any of those. I absolutely will not. If, if the divine has a divine partner for me, I am 100% open to that. And it doesn't have to be who I've been perceiving to be my twin. Um, and I do absolutely know that nothing like that is going to happen for me anytime soon because I have had the idea that I have had a twin and yesterday I realized fully that I still have been waiting for him. My being doesn't wait. My person waits, the personal identity, but I don't wait because I'm already here. I'm already here. I don't need to wait for anything. Love is already here. I don't need, my, my person has still been, and you know, I feel, but I'm willing to let go of that too. I feel I've had waves of illumination about this person that I have perceived to be my twin. I feel I've had visions of us, certain visions of us um, and my foundation, the Mama G Foundation. And so I didn't realize it until yesterday, but I still fe I feel like I've had this idea, even though I didn't realize it, that I could not succeed without him. I don't feel any of that today. I felt such, such a burning frustration yesterday, not even anger. It might look like I feel angry, but it's, 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 it's a power that comes from being that will not settle for less than literally what our own true nature, or our very being deserves. And, and for me, that looks like any type of waiting for any type of man, any type of relationship, any type of anything really. Uh, two Canadian geese, they mate for life. Love is finding me, they're saying, in the way that my person has always wanted to feel fulfilled. I'm already full. I don't need love in any type of way that my person ever did. And I feel fully immersed in that right now. I pray that you can feel this because it's who you already are. They're reminding me that Eckhart says something so beautiful and his voice is very soothing, very soothing. I've listened to Eckhart for thousands of hours, thousands, I'm not kidding, for like the last 13 years. And he says, try to pay attention to the silence in between whatever it is you're listening to music words whatever you're reading there's a pause there's a silence that is that is the space for everything and that's who we are that's who we are love you so much